Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for today's 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 19th of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and that gets us into February. And I should get on with that for you in a moment just to say that the first video is our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. I've also released the ECX said if first say look at oh please check out those two bits if you like to do that like share and subscribe on all today videos and content and thank you so much everybody um for doing that for gals webby so while i'm giving out thank you to say thank you so much to my good friend neil thank you so much good friend neil fennel for becoming a channel member um for gals weather things thank you so much uh fame weather so uh, thank you so much neil for becoming a channel member gals webby has got lots and lots of channel members at the moment hello to all of our lovely channel members if you'd like to become a channel member all the gals members only do you click the join button um, and uh, it takes you through your own page where you can see what benefits you get. You'll be becoming a channel member for the gals members and you can sign up on that page as well. Now, uh, Neil actually has a Facebook page, so uh, it's West Somerset Web. I've got the link uh, to this page in the description. Please give Neil's uh, page a like. Uh, I have, and uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, page over there on uh, Facebook. So, yeah, please, uh, you know, uh, check it out. Check out West Somerset Weather, uh, Neil's uh, Facebook page. And I say thank you so, so much, my friend, for becoming a channel member uh, for Gals Weather. So you can find a link to that page in the description with this video, of course. Okay, let's start off then. So we're going to start off with the... So no update from Hadley, by the way, the CT still hasn't updated since the 2nd of January. As soon as we get an update from Hadley for CT, I will let you know. So we're going to start off with the 500 millibar high dominant road charts for Penn State University. We've got the, uh, for the next 7, 10 days, got the ECM on the top and the GFS, which have a look at the moment, is down there on the bottom. 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, is an area in actual high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to above average heights, blue, which is high pressure, blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. So in the same sense of time frame, we see a big blocking area of high pressure over Greenland and in the North Atlantic with a trough of low pressure here across the north and the west of Europe. Now, this is bringing very cold air uh, from the north. But as I said in yesterday's video, this is very much a do or die scenario. This low pressure down here could very, very easily drag up milder air from the south. As it turns out, this ECM midnight running, we're going to see the chart data very shortly. This ECM uh, run is, is very wintry and brings a lot of snow across England and Wales, but it really is on a knife edge, and this is what can go wrong. Uh, this is the GFS Midnight Run. Not that dissimilar, really, but it has got a deep area of low pressure in the North Atlantic and across the North West Europe, and the blocking is just a little bit more towards the Canadian side of Greenland. But, uh, you know, very, very subtle differences. Probably only a, a few hundred miles difference, but makes a big difference to the overall feel of weather because this is bring, bringing the air primarily from off the Atlantic, which, of course, is, is a milder wind direction. Uh, right, okay, let's have a look at the uh, ensembles then. So these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Look at well, I think it's Well and Garden City. <laughs> Looking at Well and Garden City today, the red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Well and Garden City. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Never quite sure how to how to pronounce that. Uh, well, I'm sure it's Well and Well and Garden City. So uh, it's a suggested location for this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town or city featured in this part of the video, then please let me know and we're always happy to do that. But we're starting off below average with the upper air temperatures at the moment, but they will be lifting up through the second half this week. However, as we're under high pressure, we won't necessarily realise that lift up of the upper air temperatures down on the surface. Beyond that, we go colder from the weekend through next week, although there is a bit of scatter in there. So a couple of days ago, we had very good agreement for next week to be generally cold throughout. Now, we see that most of the time, they do turn things cold 
at the beginning of next week. But some of the ensemble members, including me, GFS Operation Run, which you just saw via the Penn State University chart, of course, turn things quite quickly milder. Most of the ensemble members are still keeping things cold, though, next week, and that is why the white line, which is the ensemble mean, actually stays below the red line, actually stays below the long-term 30-year average. As we get towards the very end of summer graph, then we've got better agreement for uh, turning things biodome. Precipitation wise, lots of dry weather over the next few days, but into next week, looking more settled. If it's cold enough, then means precipitation spikes will be delivering snow. <laughs> Question is, will it be cold enough for them to deliver snow? Snow row. The Welland Garden City looks like that. So there are some really quite big um, snow spikes there. So it looks like got reasonable agreement for things to be uh, quite snowing through the course of uh, next week. But as I say, going back to the upper air temperatures, there is quite a bit of scatter um, within there, uh, within within that now. So it is very, very much on a knife edge. This temperature anomalies for the night 17th of January below average. Precipitation anomalies for the night 17th of January drier than normal. Latest wind from that from EarthNoSchool.net shows that we've got high pressure to the north of Scotland and we're bringing in the wind from an easterly direction today. Oh, it remains cold. It's nice and sunny out there. Certainly here in the towers, it's very sunny. I'm about to shut the curtains and see the sun was shining into my eyes as I was about to record the video. Um, no, it's nice and sunny, but if you see your head out back door, <laughs> it is pretty cold with those easterly winds. OK, well, this is what you've all been waiting for, Ben. Let's start going through the chart data and try and make some sense out of uh, what's going on next week. So we, we begin with the UK bet Euro run for midnight on Friday. High pressure right over top of the country, mostly dry and fine conditions. The high pressure and retrogressing up towards Green and Iceland through the weekend. So that by the beginning of next week, we're pulling down a strong and a cold north wind. Down comes my 10 south ice firm. Looking just straightforwardly cold and wintry with the UK bet Euro run into the beginning of next week. By midnight Tuesday, we have got a bit of a low out of the Atlantic. Possibly that will come in and uh, come into that cold air, you know, and, and potentially bring uh, quite a bit of snow in with it. Upper air temps look really cold by midnight next Tuesday. My 10 south ice firm widely across much of the country. Icon, again, with the high pressure sitting over top of the country on Friday, with lots of dry weather with and the high pressure retrogressing up towards Greens and Iceland through the weekend. Down comes that northerly wind, so uh, my 10 cells ice won't getting into Scotland through the beginning of uh, next week. And then uh, we find that areas of low pressure begin to start developing close to the country. So we've got a shallow low there, we've got a low in the Atlantic, a low down here, um, and we also have to try and pull some milder air up from the south as well with Icon by next Tuesday. So the minus five south ice boat just begin to retreat a little bit away to the north and the northeast. Uh, this is KMA, uh, it's, from, uh, it's from South Korea, of course. High pressure dominates over top of the country on, um, fr not North Korea, not from Kim. Um, high pressure dominates over the top of the country on Friday, bringing lots of dry weather. High pressure retrogressing them up to Greenland through the weekend. Down comes that northerly, so by the beginning of next week, 15th of, uh, of January, we're into, well, into uh, a northerly plunge there. And then low pressure through the middle part of next week tries to push up from the south, but coming into that cold air, not managing to do so. Oh, uh, the low pressure just uh, stalls to the south, becomes a channel low, and that's the kind of thing that could deliver a lot of snow for England and Wales. Meanwhile, Scotland and Northern Ireland saying mostly dry but bitterly cold, with uh, the wind remaining from an east or east direction. Look at that beautiful channel low there, zipping across the south and out into the low countries, leaving us in those cold northern winds. Another low having go uh, coming up around the 20th of January. That one uh, goes into France. And the upshot is BKMA keeps us cold and wintry with snow, you know, in, in many places through the whole of next week. Quite an exciting KMA. Now, we know the GFS Midnight Run is going to be going milder. We saw that on the 500 Villabar high-tolerance flow chart. Let's see how that happens. So, again, we start off with high pressure 
over top of the country on Friday, bringing mostly dry weather, high pressure red stressing to Greenland and Iceland through the weekend. We pulled down a cold northerly wind. Uh, all places looking cold. Midnight Tuesday got my 10 Celsius firm into the north of the northeast. But then low pressure very quickly pushing northeastwards and bringing a big mild sector in with it. So you see these yellow curves, it can only rain when we are within that yellow and uh, within those yellow and orange colours. So there is probably a serve then on the GFS midnight run, but it's more for the northern half of the country and just back to rain down the south. And then by day 10, we're going into an Atlantic flow with uh, with winds coming across the Atlantic. Quite cold air again by day 10, but uh, nowhere near as cold, for example, as the KMA would be. And then I'm afraid we're back into like an onslaught pattern <laughs> as we go into the closing days of January with more low pressure coming in from the Atlantic bringing wet and windy weather. Uh, this is a precipitation forecast based on that uh, GFS midnight run from the weather outlook. Again, lots of dry weather until we get to the weekend. Then we bring down the cold front, start turning cold to the north with showers there turning to snow. Then by Tuesday, Wednesday, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. And initially that brings snow to Wales and the Midlands, but very, very quickly turns back to rain uh, by the end of Tuesday. Much of England and Wales with the snow going to Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England. Um, by the middle of next week, most of the snow is restricted to the very far north, then we're into showery conditions from off the Atlantic. GFS 6 then again puts us under an area of high pressure on Friday, so lots of dry weather to come then. High pressure retrogressing up towards Greenland and Iceland, winds turning into the north as we go through uh, the weekend, so cold air plunging southwards from the north. By the beginning of next week, my 10 cells ice firm into the northern half of the country by Monday. So pretty bitter with the upper air temperatures early next week. No pressure men trying to come up from the south, but it's restricted further south compared to the midnight run. So this brings more of a stir event to England and Wales through the middle part of next week. Battle lines are drawn. You know, quite a lot, quite a long way further south with the GFS 6 there compared to the GFS Big Dyke Run. See how much further south that uh, those yellow colours are, which is the warm sector. Um, no, but so event there, probably more for Wales, the Midlands, and Northern England, if anything. We'll have a look at precipitation forecast in a moment. By day 10, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing milder wetter and windier conditions up to the 25th of January. This is a precipitation forecast based on that GFS 6 head run. Again, lots of dry weather to come, but by the weekend it's starting to turn a little bit colder up in the north with showers there turning to snow. And then we start to try and bring that low pressure up from South Tuesday. It takes its time. It's not really until Wednesday that the low comes up and it does produce a significant survey for Wales, Midlands and East Anglia. Rain down in the south though. Um, no all, snow also getting to Northern Ireland as well. By day 10 most of us are going back to rain snow because restricted to central and northern parts of Scotland. If you enjoyed the video please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and don't forget to tell friends about Gaz Weathers. We thank you so much everyone for doing that. Uh, around 25 subscribers going to get us to 17.7k. So if you could give us a sub and tell your friends about to subscribe, it would be incredible. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Right, GM again, high pressure dominating weather over top of country on Friday. High pressure then moving up towards Green Iceland through to uh, through the weekend. No colder air starts to trickle southwards by the beginning of next week. But as early as midnight Monday, Tuesday, low pressure is coming up from the southwest. And the cold air is beginning to retreat a little bit away to the northeast. So most parts of England and Wales turning milder by the middle of next week with heavy rain. Snow probably more for northern England, northern Ireland, Scotland with uh, this particular scenario. Look at the big warm sector there across England and Wales as the cold air is pushed back to Scotland and Northern Ireland. However, we then go back into the cold air. So this is a different solution from the uh, GM. The low pressure gets out of the way to the east. And the wind returns into a northerly by the end of next week. So the cold air actually comes southwards again. And then we've got the ECM, which we know from the 500 millibar height on the road chart is going to be quite wintry. Let's look how that happens. So again, high pressure dominates the weather over top of the country through the end of week into weekend. The high pressure retrogresses up to Greenland ice and down comes that proper northerly plunge. My 10 cells ice firm gets into Scotland through the beginning 
of next week looking cold and wintry. Middle next week starts to bring low pressure in from off Atlantic but struggling against that cold air. Look how uh, much further away from us the warm sector is with the ECM run uh, well away to the south to the southwest. And the low pressure zips across the south becomes a channel low really which produces a big serve then across many parts of England and Wales. The warm sector generally restricted to the channel and to northern parts of France there. And then by day 10, another low trying to get up uh, from the south. And again, that's coming into quite cold air, but it's dragging up perhaps some milder air into more southern parts of the country. But generally a much colder and a much more wintry ECM run compared particularly to the GFS. This is the precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. So again, lots of dry weather until the weekend, and then snow showers packing into the north and around those coastal areas. Beginning of next week, also quite dry and cold, but by the middle of next week, in comes the snow across England and Wales. So uh, this is 17th of January, big snow event there through much of the particularly Wales and Midlands and East Anglia. I would be snowed in <laughs> if that came off. I think I would be pretty much snowed in I think there um, with that uh, heavy snow and the snow continues uh, to push eastwards as we go through to the last stage of next week snow particularly in the northern half of the country and then more snow piles up from the south as we go to day 10 so a very very wintry very snowy ECM run it is as I keep saying though a do or die snow let's go back to the snowiest sort of period which is just here um, and you can see but like it's so close to just being a load of cold rain, <laughs> really, uh, for much of England and Wales. Yeah, probably so for Northern England or Blythe Scotland, could be easier for, for so there. But for much of England and Wales, it's very close to being a lot of cold rain. So really, really on a knife edge there uh, with the ECM. And all the model output, actually, through the middle and second half of next week. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today, four day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office, gets us to the 19th of January. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them, with blocking area of high pressure towards Greenland and low pressure across the north and the west of Europe. And that brings the wind in generally from the northeast direction. So most of the options there looking cold and wintry still at day 10. But at two weeks time, we do see uh, signs of a change. This is 24th of January, 21 members of the ECM ensembles with uh, low pressure to the west bringing in a southwesterly wind. 14, again, low pressure in off the Atlantic. That could be mild and Atlantic driven. 9, with high pressure reaching up from the south. That's drier, but is mild, with winds from the southwest. And then 7, with high pressure more or less over the top of the country, slight to ourselves. So that's dry and would be quite mild with the upper air temperatures, but might be cold from frost and thaw. But it does look as though, um, as we go towards the final week of January, January we might be seeing hints of things going uh, rather milder then. Long way off, of course, in this pattern. Um, CFSB2 finally reached the 500 millibar high challenge broken down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 9th to 15th of January. The next week we'll have a blocking area of high pressure to the north and we'll bring in. A cold east to northeast wind, so cold and dry in weekend. Um, week two is the 16th, 22nd of January. Uh, low pressure across the north and the west of York. So that's more unsettled, probably still quite cold though, I would have thought. So that's when we have the greatest chance of some snow really with the third week of January. Week three is going to be 23rd to 29th of January. Low pressure again, way to the northwest, high pressure down towards Spain. Winds coming in west southwest direction. That's going to be uh, milder, um, maybe quite significantly so. And then week four will be the 30th of January to the 5th of February. High pressure is out to our west. Winds coming in from off the Antarctic a little bit like that. So again, probably quite mild still as we come to the end of January and the start of February. We shall see. We've got enough to focus on next week, I think, with the chance of disrupted snow, but on an eye fence. So um, let's perhaps not look much further ahead than next week. Right, we're done. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Webbers. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. As I say, we only need to put on around 25 subscribers to get to 17.7k. So if you could give us a sub and tell your friends about to subscribe, it would be amazing and incredible. We thank you so much, everyone, for doing that.
Uh, we're going to keep you informed about uh, all of the developments over the uh, coming days for next week. We have got the chart here, we've just seen um, very significant and disruptive snowfalls, but it could just all end up as a load of cold rain with most of the cold weather happening in uh, on Monday and Tuesday, a bit milder. Uh, after that so let's wait and see how it all works out anyway and we'll keep you informed with all of the developments all the twists and turns you know we'll keep you posted um so that's it for today it's just uh, coming up on channel tomorrow gonna have a 6 a.m uk weather forecast we'll have strat watch and we'll have a uh live stream at 6 p.m so it'll be live stream at 10 to 14 i think there'll be a lot of interest in that so please keep checking back to the channel for more but uh, for this video and for today's videos that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye for now.